This snake is considered one of the deadliest in the US and one of the most aggressive. But what actually happens if a cottonmouth bites you? Today, we're gonna be putting cottonmouth venom in human blood to find out. The cottonmouth is one of the world's only semi-aquatic pit vipers. Spending much of their lives both on land and in the water, these snakes have found their way into old wives' tales throughout most of the southern US. It is said that this snake is the most aggressive in North America, chasing you down to deliver a deadly bite. I myself have believed these to be one of the deadliest snakes in the US, but I've always wondered how dangerous they really were. Today I am joined by my friend Ray Tiller, host of the YouTube channel Fantastic Films, and a fellow wildlife educator. And we're going to be getting to the bottom of these horror stories about the cottonmouth. But first, we have to find one. Cottonmouths are one of the most common venomous snakes in Florida, but due to their camouflage and amphibious lifestyle, tromping through a swamp might not be the best way to get one in a controlled situation. Instead, we're going to take advantage of one little quirk of their reptile biology. In order to heat up for each night's hunt, these snakes sometimes come to the road to bask. So if we cover enough ground, we're sure to find ourselves a nice Florida cottonmouth. Beautiful little snake here. They're kind of fun because on land, they're pretty much useless. This is one of the most aquatic <laughs> snakes we could have come across. And it's the only aquatic pit viper in the entire world. And they are pretty gnarly predators out here. They are the most common venomous snake here in Florida for sure. And tell us a little bit about the venom inside of this snake. So these guys are a hemotoxic snake. That means their venom is going to be primarily attacking the blood. Out of all of the major pit vipers here in the United States, so you have rattlesnakes, the Florida cottonmouth, and copperheads, where would you rank the cottonmouth in that? They're definitely above pygmy rattlesnakes and copperheads. They're a bigger snake, their venom is more toxic, but there are definitely some rattlesnakes out there that are just huge, have a huge venom yield, and a very toxic venom that would kill you a lot faster. But this one is actually one of the more toxic snakes in the United States. In fact, uh, they have the nickname Swamp Rattler, not just because of the fact that they can sometimes rattle their tail against leaves and stuff to create a rattling sound, but because their venom is on par with things like Western Diamondbacks. They are nasty. But today I think we're gonna actually see firsthand what a bite from this snake can actually do to the human body. So before we collect venom, we have to have a place to put the venom. That is right. So we got a little container here. And what I'm gonna do is because we're in the field and we want the venom to stay decently intact, we're gonna actually kind of put it in like a plastic chamber. Right. So I'm gonna line this with some plastic wrap here and I'm gonna put over top, we need a membrane that'll actually feel like skin so the snake is actually inclined to bite it. And rubber band to hold it in place. And now we got a place to put our venom. So I think if you're ready, Let's actually try and get some venom from this cottonmouth. Right. I think it's time. While snakes aren't aggressive, bites do happen. We're gonna be simulating a bite today, but the time where you are most likely to be bitten by a snake is if you're messing with it. What we are about to attempt is extraordinarily dangerous, and you should not try this at home. So now it's time for the most delicate process, trying to get the snake into the tube. Now, like we said, we never recommend that you handle snakes, but if there was the safest way to handle a snake, tubing is the method to go. <laughs> Almost there. There we go. Snake is in the tube. Nice grab. Basically, only has one, only one option. Forward. Yep. And so, how we're gonna do this is I'm gonna be holding the container and get the snake to strike once it comes out all the way to yep. the edge. Okay, you guys got a good shot? Yep, good shot. Okay, snake right, is coming. slowly gonna move. Gotta keep my hands on the bottom. There you go. Oh, still gets my heart racing a little bit. <laughs> once he gets mostly out, is he gonna bite? Reluctant to bite at the moment. Maybe need to be headed. So yeah, this cottonmouth is really reluctant to bite. So here we have the perfect opportunity for it to strike and it is not taking it. So I'm gonna have to head him. So this experiment just went from risky to very risky because now Spencer has to head the snake. Oh, I hate doing this. <laughs> this maneuver is not only more dangerous for me, 
it's also more dangerous for the snake. All right, here goes nothing. I have to pin this snake in order to head it. If my pin is too weak, the snake is strong enough to escape, wrap around, and bite me before I can react. But also, if I use too much pressure, these snakes are strong, but they're still delicate, and I could injure or even kill this animal. Grabbing a snake by the head, heading the snake, is one of the most high-stress things you can do with one of these animals, and it's something that I hate doing because of the risks. But if we're gonna get that venom sample, this is the only way forward. We get one shot. Nice. Okay, all right. Let's see if we can get some venom out of this cotton mouth. Oh, there, goes, there, goes, there, goes, there we go. There we goes, got some goes. venom. Oh my goodness. Oh, there another goes, strike too. Oh goes. my goodness. Look at those fangs. Wow. Okay, I think we got right. everything that we're going to get out of this snake. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Look at the venom from this cotton mouth. Mm -hmm. That is about as risky as this experiment could have possibly have been, but we were successful. We yep. now have cotton mouth venom. So now it's time to take this back do the blood extraction and see how this venom reacts to human blood under the microscope. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is a few hours after the actual venom extraction and now it's time for the experiment. So we have our snake venom here that is still viable. We have our microscope set up. Spencer, you have your phone that's gonna record the reaction of the venom with the blood. This is the first time I've ever done any kind of venom versus blood experiment. I am super excited to see how this actually goes because you know I've done a lot of research and reading on how venom reacts in your bloodstream, specifically with the pit vipers here in the United States, but I've never actually seen it unfold in front of my eyes. So I'm super excited to do this. I have tested venoms before. The copperhead. America's most common venomous snake turned my blood into a runny soup as it ruptured my blood cells. The rattlesnake clumped my blood together, turning it into a chunky, jelly-like substance as its potent hemotoxin destroyed the sample. The cottonmouth is more closely related to the copperhead, but their venom potency is closer to that of the rattlesnake. In a few short moments, we will see exactly what chemical power these snakes are packing. Okay, so you have the venom now. Wow. Yeah. So the venom is officially mixed with my blood. Cover it's oozed out. Wow. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely not gonna touch any part of the table now that we have active venom outside of the container. All right, now time. I'm really curious to see what this looks like. Yeah, now time for the moment of truth. This is my blood mixing with the venom of the Florida cottonmouth. Before I show you the venom reaction, I already know there's gonna be trolls in the comments. So this is what healthy human blood looks like. You can see the cells are pretty evenly distributed, nice liquid consistency, those healthy donut shaped blood cells. Standard fare, healthy human blood. As this sample is exposed to the air longer, we can also see healthy coagulation happening. And I wanna show you this too, because I know there's many people who flock in the comments and are like, oh, this is just normal coagulation, nothing's happening here you clickbaited us. No, this is healthy coagulation. You can see that the blood cells actually stack up in rows. And this is normal. When you get a cut, when you get a wound, blood cells stack up like that to form blood clots to prevent you from just bleeding out every time you get cut. What we're gonna see in the venom reaction is going to be much, much scarier. I already starting to see it. I know, look how clumped together my red blood cells are. Yeah, it's really, really gnarly. So that's like almost instant coagulation as soon as it met the venom. Mm -hmm. That was a fresh sample too. We go in a little bit closer, as so you can see. So you still have some blood cells that are moving, but not nearly as much as what we saw before. They're getting misshapen too because they're actually being burst. Like the copperheads and rattlesnakes, the cottonmouth is a pit viper. And North American pit vipers have what we call a hemotoxic venom, a venom that attacks the blood specifically. It's a terrifying thing to get in your body, but that's not its real purpose. These snakes use it as a tool when hunting fish, frogs, and small mammals in the swamps they call home. 
When you're a snake, you don't have claws or powerful bite force that you can use to kill your prey before you eat it, and you're basically just a tube of flesh with a head. If your food is still alive when it gets inside you, there's a good chance it'll fight back. And many of the small animals a cottonmouth would be eating do have claws and sharp teeth that could do a lot of damage to the snake's vulnerable organs. Their venom makes sure that the prey is good and dead before it begins to eat, and also helps digest it from the inside out. The hemotoxic effects of the venom are because these toxins are destroying cells, breaking them down to their protein building blocks. And when this venom is injected into you or me during a bite, it can produce some shocking effects. It is unbelievable how quickly my blood has coagulated. And you're right, they there are like a lot of misshapen blood cells. So what it's basically doing is it's ripping them apart inside your body, that's gonna like gum up your organs and stuff. And not only that, this venom targets the blood, but it is gonna affect other tissues and stuff too. And that's gonna mean tons and tons of damage. Look at this little chunk here, you can kind of see just how like it's very, very different. Right. So, like the oh healthy my. coagulation. And yeah. so you're basically gonna have chunks like that where all the blood is just Right. And it turns your blood into like this weird clumpy jelly. That's gonna be still pumping through your body, but now it's gumming up your organs, your organ function's gonna fail. And what actually kills you with a cotton mouth bite in most most North American pit vipers is your organs failing once the blood is not functioning properly. So Spencer, a question I have for you, and I'm not sure if you're gonna have a direct answer for this, I just want your best guess. So say you were tagged by a Florida cottonmouth, a good sized adult, and if you don't slip into anaphylactic shock right away, how long can you go without seeking medical attention before you can expect your life to possibly end? The faster you can get to care, the more likely your prognosis is gonna be good. 30 minutes is like ideal, or immediately is ideal. Three hours is where you start to see really big issues. If you're going three hours without care, you're probably gonna have permanent damage. Fatalities to cottonmouths are actually quite rare. Despite being one of the more toxic snakes in the US and having the venom yield to back it up, the effects of a cottonmouth bite are typically more localized to the area you were bitten. This doesn't mean that a bite from a cottonmouth is something you can just walk off. The destructive power of this venom is a force to be reckoned with, and many cottonmouth bites end in amputation. The faster you can seek medical care if you're tagged by one of these snakes, the better. We estimate that the human lethal dose of cottonmouth venom is somewhere between 100 and 150 milligrams, and many of these snakes are capable of injecting that much or more. So while deaths are rare, a bite from this snake should be treated as if it were life-threatening. These snakes pack an incredible chemical weapon and definitely deserve our respect and our distance. But at the end of the day, they prefer to keep their distance too. This venom is a tool for their food. It's not a weapon they want to use against us, unless it's an absolute last resort. Cottonmouths get a bad rap, but are beautiful reptiles and a vital part of the natural world around us. After seeing the power of this snake's venom, I've gained a newfound respect and even admiration for these fascinating snakes, and wonder what other secrets they still hide. The world of venom is a really crazy rabbit hole, and snakes are only scratching the surface. One of the scariest venoms belonged to a spider from South America, and you'll never believe how they cheated nature to get it. If you want to learn about the terrifying bite of the Chilean recluse spider, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.